Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today I'm Muhammad Muhyibudin will be presenting about ocean iron fertilizations and questions asked about it. First, we have to understand what is iron fertilization. Iron fertilization is the artificial addition of iron into high nutrient low chlorophyll region to stimulate oceanic carbon sequestration through biological pump. It was discovered since ancient times through analysis of trapped air bubbles in Arctic Antarctic cores. The atmospheric carbon dioxide during the last glacial maximum which was 20,000 years ago is much lower than our current pre-industrial times. Over the last 25 years, several, several hypotheses was proposed to explain the lowered atmospheric level during the last glacial maximum. John Martin was the founder of Martin Hypothesis, which we use for the ocean iron fertilization. How did he came to this finding? Dust input is generally regarded as major natural iron sources for ocean fertilization. In 1990, he hypothesized that increased dust input relieved iron limitation and enhanced biological pump in HNLC area. His published hypothesis gained public interest because only a small amount of ions from carbon to iron ratios 100,000 to 1 can stimulate strong phytoplankton response. Much investigation later on is more focused and centered on artificial addition of iron into high nutrient low chlorophyll region. Why do we need ocean iron fertilization? Where is it done? What is the main objective? Is to reduce atmospheric carbon dioxide level by stimulating sequestration of oceanic carbon through artificial additions of ions into HNLC regions. Unintended secondary consequences like production of climate relevant gases or ecosystem change is under debate because it may have negative effect. So it is important to consider those negative effects and evaluate it further. Where is the ocean iron fertilization done? It is done in high nutrient low chlorophyll areas and also high nutrient low chlorophyll areas with low silicates concentrations. Uh, most studies were done in subtropical North Atlantic, Equatorial Pacific, Subarctic, Subarctic North Pacific and Southern Ocean. Ocean iron fertilization provides insights into the structure and function of pelagic ecosystems that cannot be quite from your observational cruises alone. That is why scientists and industries are both very interested in studying the ocean iron fertilization. Industries, for example, is mostly motivated by profit. So legal framework has been put in place to prevent commercialization and inflict of damage on environment by private companies. Scientists in action might be incentive for others to commit illegal experiments. Question 2. Importance of ocean iron fertilization. How one could relate between high iron and reduced carbon in the atmosphere and vice versa? Ocean iron fertilization adds nutrients like ions to the ocean surface and so it ultimately controls the amount of carbon sequestered. Addition of iron sulfide will stimulate photosynthesis and so this will enhance carbon sequestration. How many experiments have been performed thus far? 6 natural and 13 artificial ocean ocean iron fertilization has been done. Studies were done in subtropical North Atlantic, Equatorial Pacific, Subarctic North Pacific and Southern Ocean. 
but there are limitations that cause some problems during the findings. Uh, for example, single iron addition, which may cause small response in uh, primary carbon dioxide concentration, chlorophyll A concentration, and primary productivity. This occur on the first ones, EX1. Light limitation by storm can also cause no clear difference in carbon flux between in-patch and outside patch observable. Insufficient experimental durations that affected several different experiments. High dilution rate by small patch also caused no detection of fertilizations induced exports and micro or macronutrient limitations also cause insignificant changes in nutrients. What is the main is the main achieve and considered a success? These experiments are called as successful because it achieves its aim in proving that OIF can remove carbon from the atmosphere through carbon sequestration. Uh, there are some success there are some consideration need to be made to be considered it a success One, among them is the dominance of diatoms in phytoplankton communities play major role in cre increasing the biological pump timing is also very important because it includes when the experiment starts because primary productivity in ocean is very limited by how much nutrient and light is available so there are times when they are most available uh, the period in which phytoplankton blooms have been maintained by oif have lasted from 10 to 40 days most oif experiments did not cover full response times from onset to termination so the duration has to be very considered Chemical use should be iron sulfate, in which they are using iron sulfate because it's much more cheaper and more bioavailable, which makes it more efficient. All OIF experiments use physical traces to follow iron fertilized patch. They use GPS and Argos equipped routine boys. This is good because they can find it back using satellites. Mon monitoring of possible side effects is also important so that it can be used as a guide for later experiments. Potential future for OIC How to improve the experiments? We have to conduct it at the center of eddy structure. Here is the image of eddy structure right in the middle. It is where grazing pressure is low so when phytoplankton bloom they won't be eaten by zooplankton too fast and silicate level is very high which is nutritional and these centers tend to be subjected to relatively low slow current speeds with low shear and high vertical coherence it provides ideal conditions for tracing the same water from the surface to below the winter mld which is the mixed layer depth simultaneously minimizing lateral stirring and advection what should be considered to ensure that future experiments achieve its main goals first to find appropriate eddy setting in a study area and mesoscale eddies can be reliably identified and tracked using satellite sea surface height anomalies and that's the end of this session thank you very much